SAT and ACT testing. Should they even take them? If so, how does your kid stand out? I mean, after all, it's just a number at the end of the day. David Blaubaum from the National Test Prep Association joins us live to talk more about uh, some of these questions. And even though they may not be mandatory, there are a lot of high school students who are still choosing to take the ACT and SAT for their college admissions. But is it worth it? Joining us now to answer that important question is Mike Bergen, who uh, leads the National Test Prep Association's Advocacy Committee. The SATs and the <laughs> ACTs have long been considered key parts of the college admission process. But is that still yeah, true? Yeah, times are changing. Colleges around the country have increasingly become a test optional. It's a trend that's been accelerated, of course, by the impacts of the pandemic. So what do high school students need to know today? Joining us now to tell us more is David Blaubaum. He's the Director of Outreach for the National Test Prep Association. David, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. My pleasure. During the peak of the pandemic, most schools weren't even offering the SAT or ACT, forcing colleges to go test optional. But according to research from the National Test Prep Association, this actually increased the number of applicants at universities across the country, which seemingly inflated their admission standards. That number who applied just went up. The number who got in stayed exactly the same. So it created the mirage for colleges that they were more selective because they were rejecting more students. We should stop fearing tests that tell us things we don't wanna see, right? We should be prepared district by district, state by state to help students get, build stronger reading, writing, and math problem solving skills. Every large scale study that's ever been conducted on the SAT and ACT has shown that the inclusion of these scores improves a prediction of how well a student will do in college. First thing that students need to know is that they can do better on these exams. So a lot of students, they don't know that. They think there's nothing that I can do and that their score is going to be what the score is. But these are tests like any other. So the tests, they're evaluating students on content that they can learn. The longest passage will be no more than 100 words. Currently, there are passages of 700 to 800 words in length on the reading section. Uh, that's not gonna be the case anymore. So for the students whose primary complaint of, about the SAT is that the passages are so long and sometimes they're boring and I can't read the whole thing, well, they're going to have shorter passages with one question per passage. Mike Bergen is the president of the National Test Prep Association. And schools do some SAT training, but what do you mm -hmm. think about outside training? How, do, how is that helpful? Yeah, so we really live in the golden age of just information, but also prep. So students mm -hmm. can get uh, online prep for free. If students are on fee waivers, meaning they can take the ACT for free, which is 20% of students, they also get mm -hmm. free prep through the ACT. And then all students can use Khan Academy for the SAT to get free SAT prep. But then there's um, group tutoring, there's classroom tutoring, there's private tutoring. I'm from the National Test Prep Association. We have a vetted list of tutors around the country uh, where they're ethical and you know they've been vetted. So if anyone wants yeah. to check that out as well. You can always <laughs> learn more at nationaltestprep.org.